Good evening, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Yeshua. Today is Thursday, the 29th of June, 2023. It is 9.44 p.m. here in Australia. I hope you're all very well. I hope you're all blessed. Um, I just want to make a video this evening to talk about a lot of things that have been on my heart and on my mind. And I've been in a massive, massive, massive walk and search for the truth in these last couple of weeks to a month and more so than ever before in my entire life and as you know from my last video um, you know I'm just basically opening up my heart opening opening up my mind um, to whatever the father will have me learn and seek and um, I know that makes a lot of people a little wary they say you know be careful what you're opening up your mind to but I always will refute that with the fact that, you know, my father, Jehovah, the Lord God, the one true creator of the heaven and earth and all that is, he knows my heart, he knows my soul, he created me, knitted me in my mother's womb, um, he knows where I'm coming from and I pray earnestly all the time not to be deceived and not to um, have this platform here to deceive anybody else so I want to put out a, um, a disclaimer from the word go that the things that I want to talk about in the video are purely a hundred percent from my walk with father um, and my truths that I've found out and uh, the research that I've done and um, I'm in no way trying to convict or convince you in anything I'm about to say um, a lot of it will come across as very controversial and some things may even um, I, for better lack of the word horrify you with what I'm going to talk about but uh, Father has given me a heart, an open heart, an open mind to, um, to realize that we are living in the very end of time. And the deception is at its greatest, highest peak as we sit here at this very moment. And, um, you know, I'm very well aware of that, that it can come in all forms and it can come in very sneakily and deceptive. Um, but, you know, I have the Father's promise on my side that he's going to lead me through the valley of death and bring me out on the other side and so the purpose of my video today is I want to warn you brothers and sisters that um, this video may cause a lot of um, contention within the body of Christ um, you know and if that's what it is then so be it However, I'm not coming with the intention of deceiving or anything like that. I love you all very much, you know, like my true family, my brothers and sisters in Christ. But I give you the choice now, um, if you are not willing to listen or to have an open mind and an open heart to at least listen to the things that I've come across and um, the things that I'm going to talk about, then please turn this video off and watch something else. But um, my heart, my soul desperately wants to know the truth, no matter what, you know, no matter where it's taking us, no matter how far we have to go to find it. This is truly where I am in my life now. And so if anybody wants to come on this journey, and I say again, no one has to believe be convinced or convicted of what I'm saying. This is all just stuff. And please, if you're like, oh, that's ridiculous or how absurd, then please go and research these things for yourself and, you know, come back and show me some proof that you can debunk what I'm going to say or you can have a decent and respectful disagreement with what I'm saying via proof, okay? Um... So basically, I just wanted to put that warning before the beginning of my video because I know the, um, let's just say without being offensive, I know that um, when somebody is of faith, okay, because within the Christian religion, right, we are told we've just got to have faith, okay, we've just got to have faith and that's it. We don't question things. Um, that's why a lot of people, you know, 90% of Christians um, will go by the doctrine of the Trinity, 
you know, even though it's very hard to understand that Jesus can be God the Father and the Father can be God and the Holy Spirit is God as well and, you know, and people are happy to accept that, whereas I I don't have a spirit of that because I know the Lord thy God is one and only him shall we serve and I know he's a jealous God and he told us not to um, serve anything or bow down to anything that's in heaven or um, on the earth or in the waters below. Um, so brothers and sisters, I just, I wanna show you and I wanna share with you from the depth of my heart, the walk that I've been on. So I've given you a chance now to walk away if you don't wanna hear these things, but if there's something stirring in your heart, to just listen and please don't get too offended just listen to what I have to say and the things that I'm going to show you and um, then after you have then you can totally you know throw everything I've said away and you can also unsubscribe to me I have no issue with that I am so far beyond all of that you know the likes and subscribes and anything anymore it's so not about that you know this life is so much more valuable and incredible and just to have that peace i've never experienced the peace that i've had with the walk with father that i am right now in these last couple of weeks even though the things that i've found out are just mind-blowing and they absolutely shake the boat so i'm preparing you for the walk ahead and the video ahead so if you want to grab a cup of coffee sit back relax and we're going to do some study together and i just want to i just want to talk to you about some things brothers and sisters like you know like we're family like we're sitting at the dining room table together just having a conversation so basically now that I've got that out of the way, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is, as you know, um, I have my backup channel and for about a week ago or whatever, or two weeks ago, I had a strike off YouTube for my Nasera Grisera video, calling it the M-A-R-K of the beast. Um, basically, I think, I think the, um, the narrative of the enemy okay and the elites and the illuminati whatever you want to call them i think the narrative is they are writing a script and i think the script could very well be them playing out the book of revelation and that's what i'm highly highly concerned with the fact as we've been so 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 very deceived brothers and sisters and it goes very in depth into how far we actually have been deceived. Um, I'm looking at everything and I'm just seeing things now that I'm questioning and wondering why I've never seen these things before, but I realize now because we're so, coming so close to the end and that my heart really truly does seek the truth, no matter how much it's gonna hurt, no matter how much it's gonna be uncomfortable, it's, I wanna know. And, you know, the Father started teaching me and showing me these things a long time ago, like in regards to Genesis 1, where it was talking about a completely different creation than it was in Genesis 2. And, um, you know, I, many, like a couple of decades ago, I was already looking into the serpent seed and the fact that um, it wasn't, um, Eve eating an apple that was the sin of the garden and it wasn't just her being disobedient okay it was her the punishment fit the crime okay there was pain in her conception she was going to have trouble in her conceptions and there was going to be trouble in childbirth and um, you know it's all to do with her seed and conception right so therefore it came from a sexual act which that sexual act was from Lucifer and Eve, okay? That is why there's the two bloodlines to this day because when um, Eve had the sexual uh, encounter with Lucifer, okay, and now that he's Satan because he fell, um, she became impregnated with Cain and then she went and laid with Adam, okay, and became impregnated with 
um, with Abel. Okay, and you can read that in the Tanakh. We can go there right now. You can read it in the Tanakh about how differently worded it is um, in Genesis 1. And we'll go to, I think it is, I think it's Genesis 4, uh, chapter 4. Okay, and then it says, And now the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain. And she said, I have acquired a man with the Lord. Okay, she's acquired a man with the Lord. Whereas in our Bible, it says from the Lord. Now, and then it says, and then she continued to bear. So that means they were twins. They came, well, not so much twins, but basically they were, um, they were both conceived on the same t same time frame okay like like i said eve was seduced by satan and then she went and slept with adam this is medically possible to this day that a woman can go out and have sex with two men the same night and fall pregnant right it's medically possible and you know people would say oh satan can't make babies well brothers and sisters we read genesis 6 okay the sons of god came down to the daughters of man okay and they procreated so we know that's a fact okay um and then it says and she continued to bear his brother abel so she continued so it was a continuation from this birth here and abel was a shepherd of the flock and cain was a tiller of the soil <clears throat> now notice in um genesis um, when the, when the sin happened, right? That was the curse for Adam. Is that the the land would be cursed? He's going to have to work for his fruit and vegetables now, right? The the land was cursed, and this is why Cain, he was a tiller of the soil. Okay, so when Cain brought the um, the sacrifice to Father, this is why Father didn't want anything to do with it because the soil was cursed. Whereas Abel brought the, um, you know, a lamb and the fat and everything like that. And it says that the um, this God immediately sent fire to consume the sacrifice. And he was pleased with Abel's sacrifice, okay? But I just want you to note that straight away, Cain was jealous, okay? Cain was jealous of, um, of Abel exactly like his father satan okay satan is jealous of god he wants to be above god he wants to be like god he wants to you know this is he has the same traits as his father and um and, and hence the reason he murdered his own brother okay and then the the um the punishment was you know there's going to be enmity between your seed and her seed I mean, we've got to wake up, brothers and sisters. This is not just a symbolic la la fairy tale. This is, you know, this is real. And I just, I wanted to show you how far we've been deceived, brothers and sisters. So please have a look at this yourself. Type in the, um, the Tanakh, okay, the Jewish Tanakh. And have a look for yourself. You've got the Hebrew over here, the original, and then you can read it's in its original form okay as close as you're going to get it's com a lot of it's completely different for, again for another one we'll go to um and another thing i want to talk to you about as i'm remembering because i've got so much i want to talk to you about so as the father's putting it on my mind i'm just going to jump straight to that so sorry if it's all over the place but right now i want to go to um isaiah chapter 7 brothers and sisters i want you i know this is going to sound harsh and this is where people are going to start feeling you know anxious and whatever it may be and like i said you, no one's you know holding you by force to watch these videos if you feel that uncomfortable then just please walk away don't watch them but brothers and sisters you can go and type anywhere you know prophecies of jesus in the old testament right and it'll come up with a list 
of like 47 prophecies that are supposed to talk about Jesus in the Old Testament. Brothers and sisters, if you go through each and every one of them that they say is a prophecy of Jesus, none of them are. It's because they take one verse, and I'm about to show you, give you a perfect example. We have Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, right? And if we have a look in, um, in our Bibles, right? We'll just go to the King James Version or you know, we'll just use the King James just because it's, you know, the most used Bible. And then we're going to go to exactly the same one, Isaiah 7, 14. Uh, we'll do the whole chapter, actually. Okay, so when we go to... Um, Isaiah chapter 7 in the King James uh, verse 14 okay they are taking this one verse and making a whole doctrine about it okay it says therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and she and shall call his name Emmanuel this is where they're getting their whole basis of Jesus being in the Old Testament okay it's this virgin she has a virgin birth the immaculate conception you know these are the tenets of Christianity you must believe these things to be a Christian right you must believe in the Trinity you must believe in the immaculate conception you must believe that Jesus is God you must believe that Jesus is all through the Old Testament um, and that all the prophecies and that Jesus is all the way, you know, the whole book is about Jesus. Everything's about Jesus. But brothers and sisters, there's, there's been so many times, so many chances in the Old Testament where Father could have said, you know, perfect example of Exodus 20 in the commandments. When he read, um, I'll just read them now, I'll take my Bible just here and I'm going to read them to you. You know, there's a perfect example where he could have spoken, at least given some kind of analogy of his, you know, if Jesus Christ was his son and that he was equal to him. Okay, so Exodus 20, and God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and the house of bondage, thou shall have no other gods before me thou shall not make unto thee any graven image or likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the waters under the earth thou shall not bow themselves down thou, sh uh, that thou shall not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments and thou shalt not take the name of thy Lord God in vain for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain and then we go on to remember the Sabbath and um, thou shalt not kill etc etc there would have been a perfect opportunity right then and there for him to say when he's talking about no other gods beside me don't bow down to any of them or serve them for him to chuck in there that he has a son and that he is uh, worthy of um, worship and bowing down to and serving and all that kind of stuff wouldn't you agree father himself said i am a god uh, i am not a god of confusion I will not confuse you okay so let's jump back into this and we have a look here now if you know the best way to do it is to read the whole chapter okay is to read the whole chapter and it says and it came to pass in the days of Azar the, the son of Jotham and the son of Uzar king of Judah that Rezin the king of Syria and Pekta the son of Remalah, the king of Israel, went up towards Jerusalem to war against it, but he could not prevail against it. And it, and it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim, 
and his heart was moved and the heart of his people as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. Then said the Lord to Uzziah, go forth now to meet Uzziah, though and she Ayashab the son, and at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field, and say to him, Take heed and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint hearted for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rizan with Syria, and the son of Remalah, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Rumalah have taken evil course against thee, saying, Let us go up to Judea, uh, J- Judah, sorry, let us go up to Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of us, even the son of Tibil. Thus said the Lord God, It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin. And within threescore and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it is, uh, sorry, that it be not a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Remelah's son. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. Moreover, the Lord spoke again to Azar, saying, Ask thee for a sign. Um, a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Azar said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you, will, but will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and she shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that though abhorrest shall be forsaken of both of her kings. Okay, brothers and sisters, that is not talking about Yeshua Jesus Christ. Okay, that is literally not talking about him. Because for one, you want to say, as a Christian, believing in the Trinity, that Jesus Christ is God himself, okay, and he's perfect in every way, right? Why would it say here that um, butter and honey shall he eat? For one, that actually almost sounds like John the Baptist. And that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good but before the child uh, shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good that means before the child's going to turn a certain age you know like the age of accountability okay the land that you see now will be forsaken by both of her kings this is something that's happened in the past brothers and sisters this is not a prophecy talking about Yeshua Okay, it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost part of the rivers of Egypt and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And they shall come and they shall rest all of them in the desolate valleys and in the holes of the rocks and upon the thorns and upon the bushes. In the same day shall the Lord shave with a razor that is hired, namely by them beyond the river, by the king of Assyria, the head of the hair of the feet, and it shall also consume the beard. Okay, and it shall come to pass in that day that a man shall nourish a young cow and two sheep. Like, how are you, how is anyone in, interpreting this to represent a prophecy of Jesus? Okay, but what I wanted to point out here, okay, they wrote here in the King James, Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Okay, but in the original text, it says, Therefore the Lord of his own shall give you a sign. Behold, the young woman is with child, and she shall bear a son, and she shall call his name Emmanuel. Okay, for when the lad does not yet know to reject bad and choose good, the land whose two kings you dread shall be abandoned. This is not talking about Jesus, brothers and sisters. This is talking more than likely about Hezekiah. Okay, and it's um, Hezekiah was a great 
a great, great, great man. Okay, Hezekiah was one of the people that um, I think one of the greatest ones because he brought back the oneness of the worship of the Lord. Okay, Jehovah. He was the one who came and um, commanded that all the idols and everything be smashed and broken. And he even he was the one that was was responsible for smashing the bronze and serpent. Okay, because people started to worship that thing and he actually destroyed it. Okay, because people were, um, you know, people were worshipping on that thing, on that bronze and serpent. And it says, I'm going to try and find it actually now. Okay, brothers and sisters, you should have a look at this for yourself. I literally, I wish I could have shown you this, but I literally just opened the, the Bible and it literally went to that very spot that I needed to, which was in Second Chronicles and it's chapter 30 and it's talking about um, the Passover is kept, okay? It says, and I'll just read a little bit of it because I know, you know, a lot of people aren't too keen and people read a lot, but anyway, so chapter 30 in Second Chronicles. And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manassas that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Lord of God of Israel. For the kings had taken counsel and his princes and all the congregation in Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month. Okay, this is why I have always loved the second Passover because the first Passover is um what do you call it is is a tradition right they just come they do their thing they sacrifice they just they honor god with their lips but their hearts are far from him whereas the second passover if you, if you read about it in numbers it um was a time for you to come and make a free will offering so you came really when you really wanted to honor god and you really wanted to give him um your free heart offering right that's why i love it so much and so Hezekiah has um, asked and invited all the kings and the princes and everything to come and have a Passover in the second month. Okay, it says, uh, For they could not keep it at the time because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently, neither had the people gathered themselves uh, together at Jerusalem. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation. So they established a decree to make proclamation through all of Israel from Beersheba to Dan that they should come and keep the Passover unto the Lord of Israel at Jerusalem for they had not done it for a long time in such sorts as, as, as it was written. So the post went with letters from the king and his princes throughout the throughout all of Israel and Judah and pardon me and according to the commandments of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, turn again to the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and he will return the remnant to you that are escaped out of the hands of the king of Syria. And be not like your fathers and like your brothers which trespassed against the Lord God of their fathers, whom therefore gave them up to desolations. Um, now be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourself unto the Lord and enter into his sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. Okay, and go down a little bit to verse 12 and says, Also in Judah, the hand of God was to give them one heart to do the commandment of the king and of the princes by the word of the Lord. So the Lord, Jehovah, actually put everybody and gave them one heart to do this. Okay, this is really like a big special moment, brothers and sisters. Like, this is incredible. And there were assembled at Jerusalem much people to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month. A very great congregation. Now, if we go over to, um, oh, I have to read this part, sorry. This is going down to um, verse 18. For a multitude of people, even many of Ephraim and Manassas, um, Ishakar and Zebulun, 
had not cleansed themselves, yet they did eat the Passover otherwise than it was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, The good Lord pardon everyone. Uh, so the good Lord pardon everyone that prepareth his heart to seek God. And the Lord God of his fathers thought he'd be not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. Isn't that beautiful, brothers and sisters? So these people came to celebrate the second Passover. They weren't cleansed. They weren't purified. They came as they were. And Hezekiah prayed for them and the Lord pardoned every one of them. Okay, and then it goes down and said, The children of Israel were present at Jerusalem, kept the feast of the unleavened bread seven days with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments to the Lord. And Hezekiah spoke comfortably unto all the Levites that taught the good knowledge of the Lord. And they did eat throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offerings and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers. And the whole assembly took counsel to keep another seven days. And they kept another seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah, king of Judah, did give the congregation a thousand bullocks and seven thousand sheep. And the prince gave to the congregation a thousand bullocks and ten thousand sheep. And a great number of priests sanctified themselves and all the congregation of, of Judah with the priests and the Levites and all the congregation that came out of Israel and the strangers that came out of the land of Israel that dwelt in Judah rejoiced. And there was such a great time in Jerusalem for since the time of Solomon, of David, king of Israel, there was not a time like this in Jerusalem. Okay, this is the best time ever, right? The celebration was just the biggest and the best. Then the priests and the Levites arose and blessed the people and their voices was heard and their prayers came up to his holy dwelling place, even unto heaven. Beautiful, beautiful brothers and sisters. So Hezekiah, Hezekiah, it's such a beautiful story. Such a beautiful story. Um, Hezekiah was, he was top notch, okay? And because of that, also, too, if you go to read on, I think also in Second Chronicles, it goes on to talk about Hezekiah. Um, I think the Assyrian army had made threats to take down, to have a siege of Jerusalem. Okay, and basically Hezekiah paid him some money and said, look, we just want peace. We just want peace. Okay, and, and the Assyrian, I think, tricked Hezekiah saying, yeah, okay, you know, you give us money, we'll leave you alone. Turned around to say, ah, we'll take your money, but we're going to attack you still, whatever. So that's when Hezekiah built the um, the little water, um, like sort of, um, oh, I wish I could remember where it is now. But some of you may know, please put it in the comments. Um, basically, he, what do you call those things where he made a, a trench that goes under the um, the, the Jerusalem city wall right and he brought the he stopped the the waters so they these Assyrians couldn't um, they were like oh. basically what I'm trying to say is um, Hezekiah tr tried to stop the water so that the Assyrians didn't think oh we're going to take Jerusalem by siege and steal all their water right <clears throat> anyway long story short the Assyrians camped around and they were ready to siege Jerusalem. And um, throughout the night, the angel of the Lord came down and smite about 180,000 of the Assyrians, <clears throat> right? And they didn't even have to go to war. And the Assyrians, the Assyrian guy said, he went back and pretty much said, oh, there was a big mouse plague and everybody got... You know taken out by the plague because he was ashamed he didn't want to <clears throat> admit defeat right from hezekiah but anyway i get totally sidetracked <coughs> pardon me but i just wanted to show you here brothers and sisters that we, it's time to start thinking for ourselves okay when you have a look at um isaiah chapter 7 okay it is a young woman bearing the son it's nothing to do 
with a virgin and um, and as you can see here when you have a look okay the first council of Nicaea in 325 AD they were the ones who got together and um, when you have a look uh, where are we let's turn on a sec okay so the first council of Nicaea here okay this is why I am so passionate about um, revealing what the Trinity is really about okay the Lord thy God our Heavenly Father God is one it's very 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 um, obvious okay in the Word of God it's very obvious it's not only it's only when we come to the New Testament that um, and the translators the traders of translators and changing the words and everything like that and trying to create doctrines and the church fathers um, i.e. here in council, the first council of Nicaea right this is where they got together and they decided the um, uh, what do you call it um, the nature of Jesus the nature of Christ right they decided how to to do this and how um, you know this is where the Trinity came about so instead of the Father being one and even Yeshua, Yeshua himself said that why do you call me good there's no there's no one good except the Father in heaven right and many people will come to me on that day and say Lord Lord did we not do all of this name you know in your name and he's gonna say get away from me I don't know who you are um, if you want to be in heaven you have to do the will of the Father okay Yeshua submits to the Father he um, the Father is greater than he etc etc and as you see over here on the right side it's the first council of Nicaea and there is a picture here of um, okay the first council of Nicaea in or Nicaea okay with the condemned Arius in the bottom of the icon okay that's Arius here okay so you've got Trinitarian or you've got um, Arians right an Arian is what I am and then we I don't believe in three gods three gods in one I believe there is one true God okay and we're all the children of the Most High and um, you can read about what happened here they they absolutely subdued anyone that um, didn't believe as the church wrote and you've got to remember where this was where this council came from it all stemmed from Constantine he was a Roman Empire uh, Emperor brothers and sisters okay and he saw the problem of the Jews and the pagans and he wanted to create unity okay that's the problem even to this day is creating unity and how he did that he created Christianity okay and through Christianity the statement of belief was to believe in the Trinity and the Immaculate Conception they were both voted on as I'm going to show you in a second and please go and do your own research um, but I'm trying to show you brothers and sisters in a in um, in the nicest way possible of the deception and how far and how great it goes and the reasons why I think they're doing this and I will get to that very very shortly okay so we have um, the condemnation of Arius in the bottom of the icon okay so um, we'll go back to where we were okay so he's um, the council of Nicaea with Arius depicted as defeated by the council lying under the feet of Emperor Constantine now if we go to Daniel 7 we can see here this is exactly what it's talking about okay in Daniel 7 24 and says the king the ten horns out of the kingdom are the ten kings that shall rise and another shall rise after them and he shall be like unlike to the first okay this is the Roman Catholic Church okay and he shall subdue three kings now those three kings one of them was the Arians the other two was the Ostrogoths I think and the Vulgates oh, no that might not be right but there's if you have a look on the map near um, 
like the Vikings. I can't remember what their actual, their original name was. But there was three lots of uh, kingdoms, right? And they those three kingdoms were Aryan. They believed in one God. Okay? And that is who this this one that this beast or this kingdom that rose up unlike the first that is who they subdued those three kingdoms they were all Aryans brothers and sisters we should know I mean everybody a lot of Christians have a very ease in conversation of saying you know oh the Roman Catholic Church is you know they are the false prophet and they are this and they are that they're the false church and you've got to come out of her but yet when you tell them that they're the you know the instigators of this doctrine of two of the main doctrines of christianity people be no 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 don't you touch that that's my faith that's my belief i will stand on the trinity i will stand on the immaculate conception end of story okay so we're going to go to the second council of nicaea now and this is um i'll just read you here while everyone knows about the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, less people know about the one in 787 AD. It is cherished by Catholics and by the Greek Orthodox as the seventh Ecumenical Council. Unlike the first six councils that dealt with Christological issues, this council dealt with iconoclasms, which was imported into the by byzantine empire through islamic influences and in pen in uh, implemented by mono theist empire leo the third since this directly uh, sorry since this directly contradicts catholic theology and an ecumenical <laughs> council was held in eight Sorry, 787 AD in Nicaea, a little over a thousand years after this, Pope Pius officially made the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary a doctrine of the Church. It was already believed before this, but Pius made it official in 1854. Okay, talking about the Spotless Lady and the Holy Mother of God. Brothers and sisters, can we just have a moment to actually think, what if, just what if, okay, what if these two doctrines are what is causing us the deception? Okay, when you have a look at through the whole Old Testament, no matter where, you want to take another, um, another example, we'll go to... Isaiah and we'll go to chapter 9 now where everybody likes to talk about okay um, and in the we'll go to the King James as well um, Isaiah chapter 9 so you can see what the King James is saying and then we can see what the original is saying okay and this is every Christian and their dog basically will say this proves the Trinity right here, okay? So Isaiah 9, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now if you were to read that and not know the original text, you'd say, sure. And I had a, like, a thing for years. I'm like, Father, please... I know you're not a trinity. I know you're only one God. What is this verse here? What is this verse? And then, probably six months ago, he showed me. Because the original is completely different. For starters, it's in a different verse. Okay, this is Isaiah chapter 9. Instead of verse 6, it's verse 5. Okay, for a child has been born to us. In, in the King James... It says, for unto us a child is born. So already in Isaiah, the child has been born to us. Okay, it's already been born. A son is given to us. Now listen to this. And the authority is upon his shoulder. And the wondrous advisor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, 
called his name the Prince of Peace. Can you see the deception, brothers and sisters, in the King James? It is saying, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. But it says, and the Wondrous Advisor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, called his name the Prince of Peace. Now you've got to, if you're not questioning this, brothers and sisters, I would check your heart because something is going on here which you know which we have to really really look at and now I want to have a look at the genealogy of Jesus okay we've got the genealogy of Jesus here and that's this is in Matthew 1 okay now I want to have a look here there's two things I want to point out here we're going to have a look. It says, Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that was the wife of Urah. Now, brothers and sisters, I just read the story of David last night, and I couldn't believe my eyes. I always thought David was so beloved of God, so beloved of God. But I want to read you something, and I need to find it so to prove my point. Okay, now this um, is in 2 Samuel chapter 11, okay? Um, it came to pass after the year was expired that at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servant with him and all of Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem and it came to pass in the evening that David arose from off his bed and he walked upon the roof of the king's house and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself and the woman was very beautiful to look upon and David sent and inquired after the woman and one said is not this Bash Bathsheba the daughter of Elam and the wife of Urah the Hittite and David sent messages messengers and took her and she came in she came in unto him and he lay with her for she was purified from her uncleanness and she returned unto her house okay brothers and sisters do you hear what's happened there David has spotted a woman she's having a ritual bath after she finished her menstrual cycle the women would go and have a menstrual like a purification bath rather right so David's spying on this woman, having this bath, looking at her beauty, and then he calls her into his house and he lays with her. Okay? Now, that already is alarming. Okay? And the woman conceived. And she told David and said, I am with child. So she has a baby with David. Okay? So first he commits adultery, right? And then, um, anyway, I don't want to take too long, but please read Second Samuel 11 and 12, because it goes on to say that David actually sent her husband um, into battle, right, and got him killed. So not only is not only has David committed adultery, but he um, he also got he committed murder as well, effectively. So I was absolutely shocked, right? And so we have here that Solomon was the product of that, of murder and adultery, King Solomon, okay? No wonder Solomon had such an issue with lust. Okay, so you notice here in Matthew 1, that's the genealogy. But when you have a look at Luke 3, okay, which is the, the other genealogy, we'll go here... Um, uh, where are we in verse 31 the son of Nathan the son of David the son of Jesse okay where's Solomon Solomon is nowhere to be mentioned so something's going on here brothers and sisters something is absolutely going on here and um, and look at this I looked at here us the son of Canaan and I'm like son of Canaan what so I had a look at Canaan 
and um, okay, Canaan is mentioned in the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Book of Genesis, the Book of Jubilees, and the genealogy of Jesus given in Luke three thirty six. Um, the post diluvian Canaan does not appear in the proto Masoretic text, the most common Hebrew version of Genesis. Okay, he is also admitted from the writings of the Jewish historian Josephus. However, Jacobus has argued that the omission from the Masoretic text is deliberate. Despite his name being omitted from the Masoretic text, a substantial number of traditions about this other Canaan exist in history of literature. According to the Book of Jubilee, Canaan was taught to read by his fathers and he found carved on a rock by former generations an inscription preserving the science of astrology as taught by the watchers who had rebelled from God during uh, before the deluge. Okay, so he was into astrology like, brothers and sisters, can we just ask some questions? Can we just please ask some questions? Okay, now that we've talked about that, King David, okay being an adulterer and a murderer and then Canaan being one of his other in the lineage of Jesus being um you know he's the one who brought across astrology the science of astrology here we have and Jacob begat Joseph the husband of Mary who was born Jesus that is called Christ okay so the bloodline is running through Joseph okay so he is the father of Jesus right and that's in Matthew 1 now in Luke 3 it says the son of uh, Matthat the son of Levi the son of uh, Melchi the son of Yana and the son of Joseph and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age being a man supposed to be the son of Joseph which is the son of Heli etc etc so both of these accounts of the genealogy of Jesus tell us that he is the son of Joseph and we have here proof which I've just showed you that it was the council the second council of Nicaea that told us about the Immaculate Conception are you seeing what I'm seeing brothers and sisters can you possibly see why I, I have to bring this across to you even though I know it's going to turn you a lot of a lot of people away and that is fine if you don't want to hear this truth now I understand these things um, you have to come in your time your time you know might not be now to hear this stuff it might just be too full-on that's cool like I said I'm not here to convince or convict anybody in anything I'm trying to say here but what I'm trying to do is trying to find the original truth. And I think we have been so deceived and so corrupted uh, and the translations have been so infiltrated that uh, this is truly the greatest trick of the enemy is to do this to us. And we just have to, we have to sort through piles and piles and piles and piles and piles and piles of evidence and documents to try and even get somewhat close to finding the truth. Now, one of the biggest reasons, brothers and sisters, is, is that I'm bringing this across is I also think the doctrine of pre-tribulation rapture is also unfortunately one of the great deceptions. And that is a lot coming from someone like me. For the last six to 10 years, I have been one of the biggest supporters of the pre-tribulation rapture okay so it, it was very hard for me to accept that this is probably one of the biggest deceptions there is okay the idea that we're going to be taken out into the clouds protected whatever it may be okay I tell you what I just want to tell you this before I get any further. Psalms 91, okay? Psalms 91 is all you need to know. If you call on the Most High, he, you will be sheltered under his wings. Okay, you'll be sheltered under his wings. 
you're going to see 10,000 fall at your right hand, 1,000 on your left, nothing will come near you. Nothing will touch your tent, okay? That is all that we have to be concerned about. So no matter what we're about to go through, brothers and sisters, if you call on the name of the Most High, Jehovah, the Lord God, you will be fine. But brothers and sisters, there will be no escape. And I think this is what's going, this is like the, the if you want to call it the great fall in a way that's about to happen because there is so many, um, what do you call it? Um, the watchmen, the watchmen, the watchwomen. I was once one of them. Um, you know, they are so 100% sure that 2023 is the year. Like they're putting all their chicks in one basket that this is the year. Okay, and everybody is just so tired and so just grasping at those last strings. Okay, the people who who believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, they're literally holding on with all they've got. They're about to lose everything and the rapture needs to happen, otherwise they're just going to fall apart, right? Believe me, I was there too. My whole life was so involved and just consumed with the pre-tribulation rapture. That's all I ever wanted to think about, all I was ever studying, you know, etc., etc. And I missed so much of my life because of that. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you with the most caring, considerate heart I could possibly do so with. But you need to come out of that because it will not happen. I will guarantee you that 2023 will come and go, brothers and sisters. It will come and go and you are going to find if you do not come out of this belief now and really start looking into these things for yourself, this is what's going to cause a great mass exodus of believers. Okay, because they have held on to everything and given everything for this one faith, this doctrine of faith. Right? That's all what Christianity is about. It's just blind faith. Right? Blind faith. And I don't want you to be hurt. I, you know, it, it was very hard for me to realize that, you know, this is quite a big possibility that this is all just, you know, a big smoke screen. Because the devil's laughing. Every time we get excited for these high watch dates, you know, and then they come and go, oh man, the devil must be laughing. But God wants you to know that, you know, you know, it's just going, to, so many people are going to turn away from God himself, okay, after 2023 comes and goes. So many people will turn away from God, and this is what the devil has done. He has deceived us so much that we believe, that we started to believe man over God, over God's words. Okay, we're believing what men and women are saying on YouTube. I was once, myself included, right? I was telling people that the rapture is going to happen. It has to happen. It's in the Word. It's in the New Testament everywhere. Okay? I was there, and I'm sorry for doing that. But now my eyes have been opened. And it is a comforting truth. Because I know regardless, I know with 100%, without a shadow of a doubt, regardless, that my Jehovah God, my Yahweh, Jehovah, Abba, Papa, he will protect me and I will be sheltered in the Most High and every name that calls on the Lord shall be delivered and shall be saved. But know this, brothers and sisters, it says in the Old Testament that I, the Lord thy God, am the one and only God and there is no other Saviour but me. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus Christ doesn't exist or that he wasn't a prophet of God or that he wasn't the son of God because effectively we are all the sons and daughters of God and I'll show you that via the scriptures if we go to Psalms 82 okay and, and in, in the New Testament you know, when they went to stone Jesus and Jesus said, you know, uh, well, basically the Jews were claiming that Jesus was claiming to be God, right? And he said, no, I am the son of God, okay? He clarified. He said, no, I'm not saying I'm God. 
you stoning me because I'm saying that I'm the son of God, but you've heard it of old that you are all gods, right? And they don't even know their own, they don't even, the, the Jews didn't even know their own doctrine because in Psalms 82 it says, Have I not said, Ye are gods, and ye are all the children of the Most High? Brothers and sisters, we, because God is a title. Okay, God is a title. Same way as Lord is a title. Okay, his name is Jehovah, Yahweh, Abba, Papa. Okay, oh, well, Papa, right. And Abba are titles as well, like Dad. But, um, brothers and sisters, I, I truly, truly hope that you are not so offended that you've tuned off. And if you're still listening, getting in this far then you know thank you and I, I i give a lot of gratitude and 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 thanks to you for sticking by even if you disagree with the things i'm saying but um i just i just have this great feeling that we need to come out of her we need no more to listen to man to any preachers, to any pastors, to any priests, to any people on social media. We need to all come away and we need to study these things for ourselves via the spirit of the living God. That is our comforter, that is our teacher. Okay, and these people, Abraham, Isaac, um, Jacob, um, you know, Isaiah, Jesus, um, Yeshua, if you rather call him, right? They were all the prophets of God. They came to do the will of God. Absolutely, 100%. But Jesus himself never said he was God. Right? Never said that. He never said that, brothers and sisters. And there's just... There's so many things that... Um, you know that are very very concerning and I just want to I'm just gonna I'll be back in a sec so my dear brothers and sisters I I'm really not sure what else to talk about at the moment but I wanted to bring this video across to you because I truly feel that is I can I, I'm so close to being able to articulate what it is I'm trying to say that I feel what is going on and why they have created Christianity. Why they have created the Trinity as the number one statement of belief. And if you're not a, if you're not a Trinitarian, then you know, you're going to go to hell because that is the foundational doctrine of Christianity. I know for a fact that the World Council of Churches, which is in Geneva, Switzerland, which where all that other crap is, um, that is the headquarters of the World Council of Churches. I know for a fact you cannot be considered a Christian church um, if you do not believe in the Trinity. And if you do not believe in the Trinity, you cannot get your um, tax exemptions and all the special things things that churches get right and you will be considered a cult hence the reason they call the Jehovah's Witnesses a cult and um, the seven-day Adventist used to be called a cult but no it's because in the 1980s they fell and they joined the Council of Churches and now they start claiming that Jesus Christ is God and the Holy Spirit is God and God the Father is God and they're all just one but you know they're three and oh can, can you just, just for a minute, just think how much this could be hurting the Father, the one true Jehovah? Okay, imagine, imagine for a second, okay, that the doctrine of the Trinity is blasphemous. And this is why Satan has got the whole Christianity church worldwide to believe in it. Is so that he can constantly be blaspheming the father okay because he remember he is jealous of the father 
he is jealous that's the reason he got um, you know cast out of heaven and speaking of that what if the war in heaven in chapter uh, 12 of Revelation has already happened brothers and sisters what if that was at the beginning when Lucifer fell when he was cast out of heaven what if that was in reference to the very beginning when you see in Genesis right we go back to Genesis and um, we'll read here okay like I explained in my other videos I truly believe what father is showing me and um, somebody showed me today in an email that there was proof that um, you know that we that um, oh, I can't remember where it was but I know it was also in Psalms 23 okay and it talks about the fact that we are not from here and I truly have felt that for many years and I, I t tell a little story in my other video about that and how um, I've always felt that we were all spirit children of the Most High right and um, we were all getting along fine and then Lucifer decided to ruin it all on us and he decided to start having iniquity and pride in his heart and then everything just went to poop right but because of that because God's fair and because God is so just we all ended up having <clears throat> having to come down here to this earth and in better lack of the words go through this test who are you going to serve this day the Lord God Jehovah or the enemy Lucifer okay the bearer of light okay the phosphorus one okay the angel of light whatever you want to call him um, and it, it says in Psalms uh, 23 I'll just go there quickly um, because a, um, a sister had wrote to me and you know told me there was proof in the New Testament and in the Old Testament that you know um, that that's where we came from we were in heaven before and then in here in Psalms 23 it says um, down here surely the good surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and she was explaining that that word dwell was originally return and I will return to the house of the Lord forever so I'm like you know so what I truly believe happened like I said we were all up there we're all happy we're whatever and then Lucifer decided to get iniquity and pride in his heart and then that whole thing happened and then he was cast down and then because of his act people started to get curious so we all had to go through this test and we came down here and just like Adam and Eve I think when they first when they first came down here they had the glow and the spirit body of the father right now in this perfect encapsulated paradise of Eden right and then they sinned they made their choice to follow Satan right effectively and then father had to coat them with coats of skin that is the punishment the imprisonment of a body the flesh okay and that is our whole thing why we have to get out of you know we're working our way back home okay we're imprisoned right now in this flesh so I believe very much that in the beginning was when the war in heaven happened okay after that after he after Satan or Lucifer at the time started talking and whispering in, in other angels ears and telling them you know we can be better than God we can do this we can create this we can make this whatever and because notice it says here that the earth was empty it was dark it was void okay after he created it so who is this God here that's creating it brothers and sisters so I think after he started to whisper and get in people's ears or whatever he brought one third of the angels down with him to this earth okay and basically 
he told them and he promised them lies because he's a father of lies, right? But he was very good at it because he was literally, I want to say like the second in charge. He was literally the second in charge. He was that high up and he was that close to the father. But because he had pride in his heart, you know, eventually he got cast out of heaven and he fell and he took one third of the angels with him. And that's what I'm saying. What if what it's saying in Revelation um, 12 has already happened? You know, and we're, we're here going, oh, look, the Revelation 12 sign happened in, you know, 2017. And what if this is all a big joke? What if this is all a big joke on us? And this has already happened. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, again, the abomination of desolation, right? That happened in um, 765 BC. It's around that date. I'm not 100% on that date right at the second. But um, that was when Antiochus, he came and he took over um, Egypt and then he set his sights on Israel. And you can read all about it in the book of Maccabees, right? And then the Maccabees brothers basically stood up for the law of God and everybody else faltered and ended up being a pagan and whatnot. But these Maccabee brothers were like, no, we're going to stand on the will of God no matter what, even to our death. And long story short, God's invisible army fought for this this two, this father and his son. And um, all the Israelites were going, oh, hang on, maybe we should, you know, get back with them, whatever. And um, this Antiochus went into the temple of God and he slaughtered, um, sorry, he erected a statue of Zeus first in the temple of God. And then 10 days later, he slaughtered a pig on the altar and he burned up all the Torah scrolls and everything like that. Totally polluted the century, right? And then, um, and this is where Hanukkah comes from. Because that very day, that very day on the 15th, of um, the ninth month of Keslev, that's when that uh, Antiochus erected the statue of Zeus, which represents Satan, right? And then ten days later, on the twenty-fifth, is when they have the first day of Hanukkah. On that very day, that is when um, the Maccabees, three years later, they came and cleansed the temple and they put all new furnishings in there and relit the candles, and that's where they get Hanukkah from. What if that's the abomination of desolation, brothers and sisters? Like, do you know what I'm saying? What if, what if a lot of things, and that's recorded and that's, you know, it's, I don't know. And this is why they take these books out so that, you know, the majority of the Christian world, we're just happy with what the people at the front, blah, 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 are on about. And we're not, you know, we don't have that heart for God to seek his kingdom, to seek his truth and to look for ourselves. So I think that um, because of what Lucifer did and his angels being cast down to this earth, I think they were the creators, okay? Because, you know, it says here, God said, God said, God said. Okay, remember that the phrase abracadabra, that is literally a Jewish word for, um, or an acronym thing or, or like an idiom thing for uh, what I speak, I create. Now, come on, brothers and sisters, think about this. Abracadabra, which is like the full-on magic thing that, you know, they say before they pull the rabbit out of the hat, that means what I speak, I create. And here we have a God, which is in the Hebrew, Elohim. Okay, it's plural. Because in Genesis 2, it says the Lord God. Okay, and here it's just God. Okay, so him and his angels... Are coming down here they create all this stuff okay they create all this stuff and the evening and the morning okay they their day starts from the evening from the darkness into the day you know what I'm saying and it's let us let us because him and his 130 angels are down here okay and he creates them and then he blesses them and he talks about the seeds of the trees and the beasts and everything that he made. You know, he says here that he, um, 
He creates the great sea monsters and everything like that. And he makes um, men and women. He makes all of them right. And then we go to the next one. In chapter 2. And notice in chapter 1 he says nothing about the tree of good and evil and about the tree of life. But yet says the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. He didn't just speak and create it, right? He formed. It was a personal thing. Jehovah, our almighty Papa, you know, he formed us. And look what else he did. He breathed into the nostril the soul of life and we became a living soul. In Genesis 1, he just created them. He spoke and created exactly what abracadabra is right and then he places the test the tree of life and the tree of good and evil to which day we, to which god will you serve so i think as a big circle satan created this earth and that's why it is told to us over and over and over and again that this is his domain this is why he could tempt uh, yeshua with everything on this earth right because it's his to tempt with and um and then when father put the paradise he put paradise right in the middle um so like i did a drawing last time and i'll try and do a quick drawing again um and i'll be trying to be a little bit more quicker this time but basically it's real simple Right, and then we're gonna uh, no color, and then we're gonna add another little one. Alright, so when Satan fell and his angels, one third of the angels, they came down to this earth, right? And it was dark, it was void. And whatever and then they created and they created they said uh, you know let us make man in our image whatnot that is how he was able to um, seduce Eve there was no snake coming up to her saying hey how you doing you know I think Eve would have been on to that she would, you know but Lucifer came down as he was okay beautiful absolutely beautiful okay this is what they call the sons of God they looked like a man. That's why man created in his image, right? So anyway, so they come down. They create the sea monsters and everything like that. They didn't create the tree of life and the um, tree of knowledge of good and evil. And um, and Father knew that if they just if they're going to do this, if they're going to create a, an earth, my goodness. What else can they do? I mean, look at the Tower of Babel, for instance. And that's another thing, the Tower of Babel. If you have a look in the ancient Jewish text, the Tower of Babel is actually said to be a, let's call it a UFO landing landing platform. That's actually what they're building it for. And I know that might sound ridiculous, but we're told that they're the prince and principalities of the air. That's where they are, the air, okay? They made themselves a dome because they needed to make a, a, a biosphere to actually function and live down here, right? And, um, you know, and they're the rulers. They're, they're like the all-seeing eye, you know, they're watching us, whatever. And so Father had to be fair and he put his little slice of paradise right in the middle and um, enclosed it. And, you know, it would have been perfect. But the choice was made to follow Satan. And then they got banished from this garden. Okay. They got banished from the garden. And, um, you know, and it got covered in ice. It says this in the book of, um, I'm reading at the moment, actually, the book of Yasha. They got covered in ice. Okay, and this is where Antarctica is today. This is why there's the treaty, uh, Antarctic Treaty, where no man's allowed to go there, right? But Satan and his crew are, because Satan was never banished from the garden, because this is his domain down here. But um, whether he's allowed to actually go in, because the cherubim is there with a flaming sword, 
or rotating sword as it says in the Tanakh but you know the test is now in play and we have to choose this day to which God we serve and um, yeah so that is that and like I said last time you know the four rivers that come out of this garden all right the four rivers one this way one this way one this way one this way they've all got precious gems and and gold and things that come out of these um, river heads right and that's exactly what they need that's what Lucifer was that was his covering covering garment was gems and rubies and you know and all that kind of stuff so that's why when he fell it shattered all over this earth right because he's massive so anyway um, you know you can think what you like you can believe what you like I'm, like I said I'm not here to convince or convict you but I just I'm here to question because you know I mean I even received my Quran the book uh, the you know the Quran in the mail today and I started reading it and I was really excited about it but then um, I got onto a study this afternoon finding about I didn't even consider to even think about that because I know that Islam believes in the virgin birth as well and I'm like oh, man that means they're not the real one either they're not the true one either so I think it's completely lost I think the truth the real original way the truth the life the everything is being completely lost and um, I think it is our duty for those of us who wake up and who want this truth and who want this walk is I think father's clearing out the rubbish and the garbage now that we can actually find this path and um, you know I just think it's so beautiful and I'm very honored and humbled by the father that he's allowed me to have my eyes unsealed and my ears unblocked and you know that I'm able to hopefully share some of this with you and make sense but, um, you know, brothers and sisters, I, I, again, I just want to show you something quickly um, about the deception of the Word of God. Uh, sorry, about the, tran what, not the Word of God, but, but about the translations, what they've done. Okay, because we're going to have it here. And if you don't think this is a big deal, then... I'm sorry, but there's something completely wrong if you do not think this is a huge deal. Okay, so you have John 1.18 here, and this is in the King James. No man has ever seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. No man has ever seen God. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, has declared him. Okay, No man has ever seen God. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Now let's go to the NIV. Um. Oops. And go back to John okay same verse no one has ever seen God but the one and only son who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with the father has made him known they have literally translated it to say that Jesus is God who himself is God and that is not what we just read in the King James Version. Come on, brothers and sisters, please do not let this overtake you. There's something seriously wrong. There's a massive agenda going on here. 
and the agenda is to to get you to believe in anything but the one true God do you realize that this is this is why that people people are going to be running up and saying Jesus Jesus didn't I do everything in your name didn't I do all this wonderful works in your name you know and he is going to say get away from me I don't even know who you are I don't even know who you are you're workers of iniquity you're lawless the law the number one law, the number one commandment is the Lord thy God is one and only him shall you serve. Even Jesus said this. And the second one is to love each other. That's it. Everything else falls on those two. It's so simple and so beautiful, but yet you want to, you know, everybody wants to hold on to the traditions of the church fathers, the very ones who made Mary a virgin birth. Okay. And uh, the very ones that made, um, you know, Jesus and the Holy Spirit gods as well. When Jesus strictly said, you know, well, the Father is greater than me. So anyway, I'm going to leave you with that, brothers and sisters. It's probably a huge video and uh, probably a lot of stuff to digest. Um... You probably think, oh my goodness, you've gone completely off the rails. And if you feel like you need to unsubscribe to me, it may be so. God bless you. I wish you the best of luck in the future. Um, if you've chosen to stick around and, and um, you know, to have a look in this stuff for yourself, then, you know, that's wonderful. Praise Jehovah. <sighs> um, I love you very much brothers and sisters and that's what it comes down to I love you and this is the reason why I'm putting myself in and you know and being as transparent as possible and to say look I think this needs to be talked about I think we need to ask more questions I think we should really see what the agenda of the church is I mean look at the look at back in Christ's day right the Pharisees the Sadducees and um, you know they they were the the father you know their father was Satan even Jesus said that you know your children of the devil your father is Satan it's very obvious brothers and sisters and so what makes our church fathers any different this day and age it's only a lot worse now because it's a lot he's so much more subtle and deceptive now than he ever was back then and now he has millions and billions to deceive instead of just Eve and Adam. So I'll leave you with that, brothers and sisters. Please do your own research, you know, and, and don't think I'm trying to be offensive in any way I'm not. I just have questions and I can no longer just shove them under the, the um, you know, the I'll just believe it because it's faith thing. I need faith. I just have to believe it because it's faith. I can't do that anymore. I cannot do that anymore. So, anyway, brothers and sisters, I love you. May Jehovah bless you in your research and your study and your walk with him. And um, hopefully I will see you in the next video. Love you. Bye-bye.